Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at the recently released PC port of Guerrilla Games' open-world action-adventure title, Horizon Forbidden West, and see how it compares from a technical perspective to the original PlayStation 5 version of the game. For this analysis, the PC version of Forbidden West is running at a native 4K resolution, with all the graphic settings cranked up as high as possible, and upscaling options like DLSS disabled. I'll also be using DLAA as the base anti-aliasing method, NVIDIA's frame generation to boost frame rates, and some post-processing effects like motion blur intensity and chromatic aberration will be disabled in order to provide cleaner images for comparison. Meanwhile, the PlayStation 5 version will be set to its fidelity mode, providing a native 4K resolution at a locked 30 frames per second, ensuring the best possible picture quality on the console. So let's kick this comparison off by first taking a look at the character models. Now if you remember my breakdown of Forbidden West a few years back, you'll recall that the character models in this game on the PlayStation 5 are second to none. Guerrilla Games have delivered an unprecedented level of quality with these designs, using extremely high definition textured surfaces, geometry, and subsurface scattering to make some of the most believable looking facial models in gaming. The quality is so extreme, you can even see small peach fuzz capturing light at the edge of Aloy's face. So, with the PC version, I fully expected to see all of these high quality details enhanced even further. However, based on my findings, the opposite appears to be the case. Aloy in the PC version of Forbidden West objectively looks worse than her PlayStation 5 counterpart, and a lot of those smaller details feel less defined. This is most evident when looking at hair and fur rendering, as those smaller strands of hair on her head seem to be clumped together more on lower fidelity hair cards. To reiterate, the settings here for hair rendering are at their highest available option on the PC, but for whatever reason, the PS5's version of this hair is unquestionably better looking at the moment. The same is true for the fur lining of her armor and boots, which similarly seems to be missing a level of quality we saw previously. And this reduction in quality isn't limited to just the hair cards. A lot of other details on Aloy's model look noticeably worse too, like the textured surface of this armor piece, the amount of detail visible from light interacting with the surface of reflective materials like the leather here, and even the amount of detail visible on Aloy's face, like the really fine wrinkles, pores, and other lines around her eyes. It feels as though the entire model is a step down by a very slight degree, Though, even when considering these setbacks, the model in either version still looks incredible, and these particular changes are only really visible when zooming in extremely close. What's more, it's unlikely this is an intentional reduction in quality either, as the other models in the game, like these NPCs here, look nearly identical between versions, suggesting that this particular issue could just be some sort of bug or oversight that would need to be addressed in an update. Moving on. Let's take a look at the quality of the environments. Forbidden West environments are absolutely gorgeous, with massive vistas and plenty of variety to experience throughout. From rocky canyons to vast deserts, dense jungles and fertile farmlands. And using Gorilla's powerful Decima engine, this world is beautifully rendered with an impressive level of detail, geometric complexity, and 4K textured surfaces. Fortunately, unlike Aloy's character model, the quality of the environments when viewed up close appears to be retained exactly. All the same textures, tessellation quality, and overall level of detail has been fully retained, and is breathtaking, especially now that it's all being rendered at a much higher frame rate. However, I did run into yet another issue here when it comes to the draw distance of extremely distant objects like mountain ranges, that on the PC appear to have a reduced LOD as seen here. It's bizarre too, considering the LOD of decorative assets like grass, flowers, and other vegetation remain identical across versions. It's really just these distant rocks and mountains that appear to have considerably less detail than before when viewed from identical distances with identical lighting conditions. On the flip side, those decorative assets like the tall grass and the large plains do look much better now thanks to the use of DLAA greatly smoothing out the aliasing of all those small details and making the windswept grass appear much cleaner as a result. 
I also wanted to point out this really nice fix that's finally been applied to this version of the game. On the dense jungle islands of the old San Francisco, there was a section of this beach here, first shown at Sony's State of Play, that had destructible buildings that an enemy robot could smash straight through. However, in the PS5 version of the game, this building has been glitched out ever since launch, and still remains broken in the version that I tested this week. The PC version, however, finally corrects this bug, and those destructible assets are being rendered as intended. Next, we have lighting and shadowing. As expected, the base lighting design for this PC port of Forbidden West hasn't changed all that much, if at all. The game looks identical across either platform, with the same color grading, dynamic time of day, and additional ambient lighting effects all at play. Though of course, because of the randomness of environmental factors like dynamic weather, live shots of certain scenes like this one may appear different in this comparison, but can of course look the same if all those variables were matched up exactly. That being said, the PC version does at least sport some slight improvements to its screen space reflection quality, giving water surfaces like this one an ever so slightly cleaned up reflected image. As you can see, those same typical SSR related issues do still rear their ugly head, like the blurry looking railgun arm shown here. But otherwise, the result is serviceable and looks good without being too resource hungry. Shadows have been handled the same way, but have even more granular improvements, including a bit more softness to reduce those harsher edges. Ambient inclusion has been adjusted a bit, giving a bit more definition to certain geometry closer to the player. And similarly, anastropic filtering has been improved as well, though these few tweaks still aren't going to have that big an impact on the overall quality of the presentation. And finally, we have the effects. This is yet another underwhelming aspect of the PC version that isn't necessarily worse, but doesn't improve anything in a noticeable way either. All those great effects already in the PlayStation 5 version are still at play here, like the fantastic ground deformation effects for snow and sand, along with the huge particle counts in those intense battles, and nice elemental effects as well. I was especially impressed by details like this one, where Aloy will actually sweat when moving around through the desert region, what I did notice though is that some of these effects, mainly those used to portray the water simulation for waterfalls and rivers, actually look less believable than they did on PS5. Other than that though, all the water effects I looked at and tested are about the same, and still look great all things considered. Finally, let's wrap up with a brief sound comparison. Which version do you think has the best audio quality and design? Machines don't seem hostile. That's strange. Those machines don't seem hostile.
And that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. Overall, Horizon Forbidden West is a very good port of one of the PlayStation 5's most technically impressive titles, save for a few minor quality hang-ups that I'd like to see addressed. The game runs beautifully on my machine, even with those upscaling solutions disabled entirely. What's more, I haven't run into any noticeable stuttering at all with my time playing, and quality of life improvements like simply being able to see the game world as you tweak the graphic settings are a great touch. My only issues really are with the small things here and there, like Aloy's strangely degraded quality, the decreased LOD for those distant mountains, and this weird bug in the photo mode where the elevation adjustment skips around uncontrollably, making precision capture very difficult. I also would have liked a better solution to transfer saves between the PS5 and PC, though this is not something any previous PlayStation Studio PC port has offered, so it's expected at this point. Even still, for players new or returning to Horizon Forbidden West, this is easily one of the best ways to experience this game, even with those minor technical hangups I highlighted here. The performance makes the gameplay far and beyond better than what's currently available on the console, with precision arrows and chaotic combat being an absolute must. But what do you guys think? Which version of Forbidden West do you prefer? Let me know in the comments section, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this posted every week.